Yum, yum. Hello, everybody. Uh, so today is the very first video that I am producing for the Reading Master Course 3. Um, and I figured I would sort of catalog my journey through this process with you guys. Um, it's going to be less refined. Uh, I will probably have sips of my coffee and other drinks while we're at it. Um, but I want to sort of capture thought process. I'm going to show you roadblocks that I run into, um, problems that I have to solve, all in the service of building the content that you will eventually consume uh, when the course is ready uh, early next year. So what is the first thing I did? And, and this, is, this is kind of interesting. You know, I've been in um, the studio system for so long that I sort of took things for granted. You realize that there were there were things and tools that I had access to that solved problems for me and I didn't have to think about them. It's a really great thing. It means it could focus more on the art of the process and that's really what this course is all about is teaching you the art of rigging and that artistic process combines the technical art of building rigs that you can use as well as and what I think is not taught very often the art of the shapes and the shape language that gives you the final result, right? And sometimes, a lot of times, when you don't have a studio supporting you, don't have all these tools built, most people scramble. And I say most people, and I mean small studios, groups of people are trying to get projects together, they'll muscle through. Um, but but it just it's harder work to just get something moving at all. So I'm hoping through the building all of this that's going to help so anyway let's, let's talk about this first thing so um what i've built here and you'll see on the screen is a um is a little rig and what i'm trying to do and what's important um to solve i realized that i took this for granted was it whenever you rotate something in um, computer graphics you know if you're using matrices or um, quaternions or euler angles the way the animator or you tend to work with it, you work with Euler angles, right? You're dealing with this um, position X, Y, Z, you're dealing with rotation X, Y, Z, right? You're dealing with, you know, rotate, rotate an X, rotate an X, rotate, I'm so used to Z up, I get myself used to it. So Z is forward, you know, X is this way, and then Y is that way. Um, so, uh, but when you're trying to break those, um, those values out, so that you can get custom shape corrections at any point, which we're going to do throughout, right? If I'll use my shoulder example, and this is this is a perfect example of why this kind of thing is important. If I rotate my shoulder up, right, I want to be able to say, hey, when I go from here to here, I want to get a value that I can use to drive a correction to get my shoulder to look right. Um, and then I want to be able to go down. And I want to be able to go forward, and I want to be able to, hey, hey, look, my hand. Um, back, you're going to see me keep looking down. This is new for me, having me in the thing. Um, uh, yeah, or you want to go back, right? So, all right, that's not too bad, Rich. But the problem is with the way um, internally how the math is is dealt with, and i got to stop shaking this table because the camera shakes, um, is it uses a matrix. And I'm not going to get into it heavily here, uh, but you deal with... It's basically a four by four matrix, which means you've got you know four rows and four columns, columns or rows. I probably got it backed up, uh, messed up. And in that, it it internalizes the idea that there's a vector, there's a direction for x, a direction for y, a direction for z. There's a position, um, there's scale and shear. It all gets compiled or put into that. All right. The problem is that if I put my arm, let's say here, right forward, I'm looking at you forward. I can get to this direction from here, and I keep not want to hit my microphone, um, or I can go from the bottom up, right? So I can use different values to get my arm to point in the exact same position. And internally, the math will sometimes give you, you know, zero to 180, and it'll flip, and then give you 180 on across two other channels. Up, and I'm sure you guys have seen this. So that is fine for internally getting my arm where I want it to be, and we'll keep using the shoulder as an example. But as an artist, I want to say, well, I don't really care how it gets to this position, but when it's in this position, I want there to be a mass response. You know, I want to be able to pull this over. I want to see my clavicle move. I want to be able to get, you know, my pec pushing up against the deltoid as it's on the side here. And, you know, you have shapes that you want to see. 
to get those shapes, you're never going to get them with just a weighted skeleton. I want to we'll dispel that myth right now that hey, I'm just going to put joints in and woohoo, I've got magic. No, that's we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna throw that idea out. And I'm going to show you the the work that goes into making this stuff. It doesn't mean you can't have tools to help you. Grant, there's, you know, I'm going to come from the um, where my background over the last 13 years has been, which is you know cartoon like characters. This is not a visual effects type thing, though. The distinctions between them are are more common than you think. But anyway, tangent outside, um, right? We're, we're we need to be able to get that shape that we want. So that means I need a way to get a value that's consistent so that no matter how it gets there, that the shape correction is correct. Another thing we need to do, which very few um, systems do out of the box, is I need to extract my twist. So when put your finger here. Did, ready? Class is in. Put your finger here, and then rotate your hand. You can't really see my hand because it's off screen. But, but what's going on? You'll notice that the skin, the, the muscle on the top of your shoulder, it doesn't change. Your arm is twisting but here isn't. So one of the problems with any IK based system when you start, if you don't do the work to get the values out, is that you'll do this kind of a thing and all of a sudden all the twist is happening here. Shouldn't be happening there. Your twist should actually be fading from your elbow to here because when you roll your arm, your deltoid will turn a tiny bit at this point, but really your biceps are rolling up, right? So if you if you really look, you're that shape of your deltoid that does this kind of a thing that comes right down there. When you rotate, your bicep points up, but your deltoid doesn't, right? Your deltoid is already pointing up at this point. Anyway, we'll get into body mechanics later in the course. But so long story to get to why I created this and why I'm realizing that as I'm embarking on this journey, there are all these fundamental tools that I'm going to have to create, which I don't mind, um, to solve problems that I haven't had to worry about for a while. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to hide my face. You don't need to see me. Just the screen. Okay. So what is this here? This is a little rig that I built and it's going to be, it's going to look a lot more complicated um, than it is, but what I want to do, and let's, let's show this off here. Um, so let's look at this up angle. Um, so I've created these um, backdrops, which I really, I'm really liking them. It allows me to take, you know, a complex uh, rig section and put them into, into things. So I'll show this. Though I tend to stretch these things out and make them weird, which is on me. So let's pull this stuff up so it's a little more contained. All right. So I built this little system here. And we'll zoom this in so it's easy to see. And what I'm doing is, let's select this, not measure, let's hit the angle. So now what you're going to be able to see is a little degree thing here. And as I pull this down, Right. What I'm getting is I'm getting a, a value of 28.5 degrees. Okay. Um, <clears throat> or sorry, 43 now. So here it is. I got 43 degrees. And if, if we look over here, you can see that you've got rotation of 43 degrees. All right. Now, if I select this, this is my output. You're going to see that I've got 43 degrees. All right. Also, what you're going to see is I've got all these different things here. So up, pause, which positive direction it's funny it's actually down but that is the positive value you know i'm giving it a value of 20 degrees in the x of 43 right and as i let's do this so i go here and we will rotate this right and now if i go back you're going to see oh i turned it a little bit hey um i've got 17 degrees up and if I go to my thing here, and you have to pardon my dancing um, through this. All right, so if I grab that, you're gonna see I've got 17 degrees. Um, you go, oh, well, that's fine, Rich. I'm, I rotate that anyway, that's what I'm gonna get. Well, the problem is, as soon as I take this bad boy and I start doing this kind of stuff, right? Now, what'll happen is that internally, this, um, rotation can get really, really funky, right? This might be, and I'm, I'm jumping around, I'll try not to go too fast. So this sort of gives you this thing here, but what happens when I start going and I start twisting it? And I start doing this kind of stuff, right? And I start doing this kind of stuff. All of a sudden, I'm getting all kinds of funky values in there, but 
And, and if I look here, and I know this gets a little messy visually, but what I'm worried about, and let's actually hide this so I can show you. And hide all these little bits here. All right, so let's take a look at this. I have an x rotation now of negative 19, a y of 54 degrees, and a z of negative 40. That 54 does not map into the fact, if I look at this from the side view, so here I am looking at this system from the side. This is my joint, right? Its upward progression is actually only 31 degrees. That's the number that I actually want, you know, is, is the value that is going to drive my upward shape clean. And as I twist this system and I start moving things around, right, I'm getting all these, all these wacky values, right? And that's not what I want. I want to say that on this axis, right, what I'm seeing there, I want to get a clean value out. So I'm going really fast. This will all be completely covered. I'm going to break this down and, and show the math and all the thought processes in, uh, into this uh, little thing here um, in the rigging course. But I just to show you, um, I, I will explain um, how I built it and why I built it um, in more detail, I guess, is the best way to say it. Um, and this this uh, widget will ship with the uh, with the training, so you'll get the you'll get this to be able to use. Um, let me do this kind of a thing. All right, you know me. If anybody's ever watched the other rigging courses, I'm all about cleanliness. But I I need to get these clean values out. The the mo the, the 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 lesson here is created this this rig to to project the angle that I'm looking. Let me turn. You guys can actually see me again. <laughs> Um, so the key is to get, um, to create a system that gives me those clean angles. And really that twist extraction is kind of the cornerstone of this because with an order of operation based weighting system, which is what Moto has, and we're going to extensively use is that I, I want different weighting for my twist than I want for my up and down, right? Up, down, left, right, forward, backward, up, down, however, um, you know, you want to fade that here. But for twist, you want it to fade along the length, right? So I'm rolling it back to the beginning of the conversation. So anyway, this widget, and I can select the um, the angle measure. Let's do that. Oh, no, 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 no. And I've named all these, so I should be able to see upside measure distance. Here we go. Up make measure angle. There we go. And actually, I can show you all of these, right? So I can see how I've there's like here's the up measure. Now what's interesting is C, let's do this. This is the angle I want. But when I go here, you can see that it's still giving me a value, but it's stopped. Um, if you use the angle measure uh, modifier in Moto, it doesn't actually have a, it, it'll go positive no matter where it goes. It's always measuring just the world angle. Um, so the way I got around that is I used a project, project on surface. So this is just a polygon, <laughs> total hack and sauce. And the tip here, um, you can actually see it's projecting a locator onto the surface, and then I'm measuring the angle between this locator and um, I'm just like this again, so you can see, right? So from this locator to the pivot point to this um, this guy there. So that's that's sort of what's happening. Is we're not sort of that's exactly what's happening. So I'm getting the value, I'm getting the the degrees out of that by by basically flattening it out. And then I use uh, another trick of, and I'm explaining it now. I promise it'll be much more, um, it'll be slower and more well thought out. You get that's why I say in front of the curtain is what I'm calling this. And my curtain back here um, is you're gonna get to hear how my brain works, and uh, I'm gonna try to download how the thought process. I'm going to engage with you guys. Um, as all the new system and stuff gets up, I'm hoping that people that want to come on board will give me input and we'll talk about stuff together, solve problems. So you can actually help me along the way um, to make sure I'm covering the stuff you want to learn. But anyway, I will, I promise it'll be slower. It'll be more paced and you'll be able to follow along. Now you're just getting to see how the squirrel brain runs at 100 miles an hour almost all the time. Um, so anyway, that's that's sort of my, my hack of how I have, you know, um, let's go back to local, right? Because this this was the big thing for me is I wanted to make sure that as I'm I'm pulling these things down, I'm getting a clean 
you know, angle across um, the axis. So anyway, ramble, ramble, ramble. This system separates out up and down from left and right and gives me a twist. And you can actually see, see the twist neg. So now I, gro I rotate this and I'm getting a, very, a clean twist angle that I can use to drive shape corrections for when I twist my arm. I also will be able to use this to drive the joint rotation that we're um, gonna put together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the whole process, but anyway, I, w I wanted to start something and get something out for you guys to see. Please um, share this with anybody that's interested, obviously, um, and I, I wanna try to get everybody that has ever purchased or um, participated in the RMC before, the first two, I really wanna get all you guys back together. Um, you're gonna have the most um, quality input and critical feedback for me so I can do the best job possible. Um, so if you can, shake the trees and the rafters and get everybody that's, that's used um, the Ringing Master course before um, to check this out and we'll start the communication, we'll start the dialogue. All right, I'm gonna let this be that. Um, I will cover this in more depth, but um, a small rig um, that solves a fundamental problem, uh, you're going to be amazed at how much this idea will s make creating clean joint shapes. It's, and it's something I've taken, granted, taken for granted for years, uh, and I'll be able to bring this to you guys. So um, my hope to, to end is that... Um, that the foundry will put this into motor directly and it'll just be something you can read out of a joint. That would be fantastic. Um, it's certainly not an ego thing for me. I don't care that I've done this. If I've got to rip it all out, it would be even, it'd be just better and cleaner if it was solved internally. Um, but it isn't right now. Uh, so we'll see, you know, uh, I'm in talk with the, um, in talks with those guys and you know, I'm sharing everything I got. So as I go through this, what I share with you guys, I'm sharing with them. All right, enough rambling. Um, I will, uh, do more of these as I go, please, uh, comment let me know what you think and uh and let everybody know all right man see you guys yum yum